Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. So today, we don't do anything really serious. Well, actually we do, but uh, we don't do anything that really shows in the graphics. The game is actually the same, but if you take a look at the right side of the screen on the hierarchy over here, we have our enemies uh, dying and we simply disable them. That's exactly what we had prior. But now if we spam a new one, we actually reuse our old prefabs and we don't actually call instantiate as often as we did, which is really good because we're on a mobile game and then mobile game performance are um, not as good as on PC, so we optimize our code quite a lot and yeah, so guys, without further ado, let's get started. So today is a fairly simple episode again, we are going to actually pool our enemies. So say we're spawning a lot of enemies as you can tell on the right here. As you can tell they now have uh, an instance of a game object, every single one of them. But what I'd like to do is, um, we actually started implementing this a little bit earlier when we did our spawning, is instead of just putting them on disable like we do right now, we actually just turn them off, they still exist right there in the world space. So what I'd like to do is actually pull them, so um, so I spawn a new one now, I, instead of actually spawning a new game object, I'd like this to take an existing one, re-enable it, replace it, um, do your reset function, and just give it its life back, basically. So um, we don't have to do a lot of instantiation while the game is running. Alright, so what we're going to do is we are going to be playing around the enemy script today and also the spawn manager so those are the two that are going to be handling most of our pulling so let's have a look right here we have the enemy class it has a lot of public fields the hit point type per seconds damage we're not really interested in that because we're going to be resetting those every time we uh, say we spawn an enemy now the way I'd like my pulling to work is I like to actually just differentiate them by using the model so I'm going to have different model for the tiny enemies I'm going to have a different model for the fast one, for the uh, big, tough one. So we are going to be pulling by NV type, which is what we have up here. Okay, so um, based on that, what we need to do here is we need to actually well, create our pooling. Um, the information we need from outside to actually create this pool is the isAlive function. So say the enemy is the same exact type as the one I'm trying to spawn and it is not alive, so his life is on false, then go ahead and reuse him. So I will need this to be public, let's go ahead and change that, so public bool is alive. We'll leave it on false, that's fine. And now if we go just a little bit down here, we have a few functions that we use, but we're going to create a new one, public void reset. And this is going to happen every time we um, spawn an object, actually when, whenever we call the spawn enemy function. So whether it is a, an existing one or a non, well actually a new one, a new instance, then we're going to be calling this function. In this one, I actually like to reset the transition float. So transition is going to be equal to zero. Last hit is going to be equal to time dot time. And let's actually have a look. Uh, what else we could be changing uh, is alive we toggle it on when we do our spawning hit point we don't actually need to reset that because we're going to be like putting it on a certain value depending on what level we're on so we don't even need to touch any of those if I'm correct and only these two should actually do the job all right so um, that's pretty much it actually for the enemy script Let's go ahead and open up our spawn manager script. So let's find it first. It is over here. I'm going to double click on it. And inside of my spawn manager script, now we need to change things a little bit. So um, first off, we need to have some kind of list of every single objects on the scene. So every single enemy object. We are going to go ahead and just include system.collection.generics. So we can use C sharp list or collection, um, and we are going to create a private list of enemy. Let's go ahead and just make a list of enemy. That would mean calling the enemy pool, enemies pool, and it's also instantiated while we are at it. So 
enemy pools here. Okay, so if we take a look at this now, we are spawning an enemy using a prefab index. Now that is not going to work anymore. We are going to need to spawn using an enemy type, so let's do that. Type like so. And we are be we're going to be removing this instantiate from this spawn enemy function. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we've done in the combat text manager. So basically we had another function down here, a private enemy function that returns a enemy. So I'm just going to say get enemy. And let's get it using the enemy type, like so. And this is where we actually need to do our pooling. So we're going to start by declaring a empty enemy, like so and actually look inside of our list if we have any available right now um, enemy pool so instead of actually putting it empty we're going to say enemy e is equal to our list so our enemy pool list now we'll look for one so fine and then this is where we got to be using predicates so uh, I'm just going to call this x lambda to say is not alive so x is alive like so so this way we check okay um, the object we're actually looking right now is it alive if it is yes it moves on to the next one and it if, if it is uh, false so if this matches the object we're gonna do a second check so n x dot type is equal equal to type okay so for every single object in this list it is going to start and look okay is that enemy not alive if it is not alive we are going to go check for the type and if it's the exact same type then we return that very object so it goes back inside of the e now if it doesn't find any matches uh, while it's actually iterating through that so if e is equal equal to null then this is where we do the instantiation so this is where i am simply going to copy everything we got up here and put it inside of this and of course there is going to be a few things that are missing so let's start down here um, e is equal to instantiate we need to instantiate at prefab index let's actually use ant type instead and then we're spawning it at angle times direction let's actually spawn it at vector 3.0 and then we're going to be moving it afterward and that's pretty much it I think we create this, then we get the component enemy. This is what we store inside of our E. Oh, let's also set the type. So E.type is equal to type. And once we actually created a new object, so once we created a new game object, we are going to add it inside our enemy pool list, like so. So enemy pool, add E. Then we finally return E. So if we find something here, we don't have to enter this if statement and we just return what we got. Now, if we don't find anything, we create it, we set its type, add it to the pool, and then we can actually return the thing. Having this uh, coded now, we can go ahead and just say enemy e is equal to get enemy type. And now we actually have an enemy inside of that. So we know that uh, it might be an existing one or a non existing one. In both cases, we want to add the reset function. And let's actually give this a try right now. Oh wait, something is not going to work. We forgot to actually um, assign a position. So, as you can tell, we actually spawn them on top of our tower. Which is obviously something that does not work. Now, let's have an actual... Oh, what's this? That's a bug. Um, before we have a look at the uh, pooling mechanic, Let's actually put the position. So if I remember correctly, the position was um, it was a quaternion direction times angle, I think. And nope, it's the other way around. Sorry about that. I'm still having a little bit of trouble with these quaternions. So um, the quaternion times the vector, not the vector times quaternion. Okay, let's actually go and hit play. Go here. And do we spawn an enemy? Yep, but we do spawn an enemy. Now let's have a look over here. We kill it, it disappears, it's still there. If I enable it, as you can see, it's still there. And 
Oh, that's funny. Okay, well, I mean, anyway, it's there, and it is inside of the um, the list. So it's it's inside of the actual enemy pooling list. Now, if I spawn a new enemy, I'm actually expecting this to be reused. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you can tell, we didn't spawn a new object, and we reused this one. And I'll say there is multiple enemy needed at a time, so we need to say have five enemies spawn at the same time, then it is simply going to create all of them as new object. But now, uh, once they're there, we can actually reuse all of them as pooling. So as you can tell, I can just go ahead and spawn some, and it's simply going to reuse the one we currently have. And if we ever exceed, then it's simply going to instantiate a new one, and we're going to be able to reuse that one later on. So we're pretty much just, um, we're having a limit that is flexible, so once that limit is breached, we can't really go back and delete those. Well, technically we could, but we don't actually want to do that, because when we delete, we have to instantiate new stuff later on, and you know, um, this separation is pretty costly, especially for mobile games. So guys, we pretty much just implemented the pulling enemy, we should have done that a little bit earlier, but um, I, wanted to have, I wanted to have some kind of solid pulling mechanic first. And I've noticed something, I don't know if you guys noticed, if we spawn an enemy and we click on it, the type is actually nothing, so we don't have a type. And I think that's because my enemy type are, if we go over to the enemy script, or the enemy type enum, we double click on it, F12. Yeah, so tiny is equal to 1, let's actually make sure it is equal to 0. And we could actually remove those. So fast is equal to 1 if we don't assign anything, and tough is equal to 3, I mean 2. Now having this in mind, hopefully everything still works fine. And uh, yep, this object right now is a tiny object. And let's actually give it a try with another one that we're going to be removing right away. So if I go under my game, Game UI, uh, actually no, Spawn Manager, I'm going to increase the size of that, and uh, keep this exact same tiny enemy, but this time we're going to be trying to spawn a enemy at the index, well of type, the second type, so what's our second type? Tiny, uh, no that's the first one, fast, okay so I'm going to try and spawn a enemy type fast, and hopefully we don't get a crash. So go back here, press play, and it's actually a fast enemy. Okay, so everything seems to be working fine, we're going to be able to develop more enemies in the future. And uh, that's pretty much it guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section below, but I'd prefer you actually leave them on the Facebook page because it's easier to reach you there. And um, yeah, so if you enjoyed or if you liked, please leave me a like, really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next episode.